The city of Sacramento has taken on a handful of new initiatives since we spoke with Sacramento Mayor Daryl Steinberg last week, including a new academic support program. And uh, we also talked about funding from the CARES Act that's going to further assist Sacramentans who are affected by COVID-19, which is all of us. Mayor Daryl Steinberg is here now live. Welcome to the show, Mayor. Thanks for joining us. I hope you had a nice weekend. Um, distance Thanks. learning, that remains you, to be... Austin. On top of everyone's mind, we're talking about families, teachers, administrators, a lot of people really stressed about how they're gonna make it work. And now the city is stepping in, you're offering some academic support. Can you tell us about that? Well, we are, Aubrey. As you know, as we talked about last week, um, the city got $89 million of CARES money. And we decided um, as a council unanimously that we were gonna dedicate that money uh, to the community and to the people in need. And we set aside about one quarter of it for youth and for workforce development. And in that youth pot, we are working in partnership with the school districts throughout Sacramento to make sure that they can provide that extra academic enrichment for students who are struggling and who are struggling prior to distance learning and, and who are at risk of being coming even more behind because of how difficult this circumstance is. And so we're working with the districts, we're opening our community centers, and we are providing uh, that extra enrichment. And it's one of the proud parts of uh, our CARES investment. Um, look at, for so many parents and for kids, this is really a difficult time because distance learning is not um, optimum, obviously. I just want to say I have such great respect for parents especially who are trying to juggle so many things and for kids who are not giving up and not giving in and who are doing their very best to learn. Um, good, good things come out of difficult circumstances and uh, I know this is a struggle for so many. Well, I'm sure for a lot of families that extra support with the community centers when it comes to distance learning is very welcome. Now, speaking of schools, I saw that you wrote a uh, blog about the various school districts in the city. There's more than one. There's actually 12 or 13, is it? Why are there so many here? Well, um, we're a big city. And, uh, uh, and of course, um, there's a lot of history to all of the, the way the school districts have have emerged, um, but it is interesting. I mean, we've got high school districts, high school districts, got elementary school districts, um, then we have unified districts. But you know, I wrote yesterday with Dave Gordon, the superintendent uh, of county instruction, about my concern and our concern about Sac City because that's the largest district uh, in the city, forty thousand kids, seventy plus schools. And they are at a real impasse with the teachers union. And this is not new. Uh, it has been really a struggle for many decades if you go back and, and look at the history. And so we stepped forward and really just said that um, please find a way to compromise so that there is some clarity and a single wide system here. It really is chaotic if there are 70 different rules in terms of how many hours of, of synchronistic learning versus versus um, uh, independent study, synchronistic learning being direct teacher-student interaction. Um, you can't have 70 different ways to do this. There needs to be one unified way, and yes, they have a disagreement, but adults have got to find a way to resolve the disagreements on behalf of the kids. And on behalf of the working parents who are already struggling, and so as mayor of the city, I couldn't just let um, the events pass. Today, we'll see what happens. I hope that they can get it together so that there is one uniform system here and, and put the kids first. Yeah, there seems to be a lack of collaboration when you talk about the history between the Sac City Unified School District and the teachers unit. Uh, union. I'm a frustrated mom. I have two kids in Sac City, um, and these two sides really can't seem to be negotiating successfully in this latest round with the distance learning. Uh, I know you wrote about it, but is there anything else that you can do at the city level that's going to help with this impasse and, and get to some kind of agreement? Well, you know, back in 2017, when I was new mayor, I stepped in and helped mediate this contract dispute that uh, where the teachers were on the verge of a strike. 
it, it, it was an imperfect settlement. Um, and, and of course, the troubles have continued. Um, I'm willing to do anything on behalf of the, the, the kids and the families here to help the parties work it out. But I mean, ultimately, they have to work it out because in the end, it's not just about this chapter because there have been many chapters and we'll get through this. It is about creating a culture of collaboration within this district so that this doesn't continue to happen. The teachers, by the way, are great. We have dedicated teachers here. Um, and we've got um, a superintendent, in my opinion, who's focused properly on equity, on making sure that those kids who have been left behind and who are, are come from disadvantaged backgrounds, that they get everything that they need. There ought to be a common ground here. Um, there has to be. And we just have to keep urging it. And parents have to keep urging it because the chaos and the disagreement and the, the back and forth in the end only hurts the kids. Yeah, and I'm just taking it day by day. But fingers crossed and good vibes that they do work it out. Um, good, and let's, let's finish. Good vibes. Let's finish with this. Um, talk a little bit about the progress of the Office of Community Response and Public Safety Reform. Well, tonight we're going to get a report from our interim director, Bridget Dean, who's leading the effort. Look, at when we talk about police reform, I believe that this opportunity gives us uh, the chance to lead not just the state and the country when it comes to the right way to do reform. Because what we're really talking about is in a healthy way, redefining what we expect of police officers. They are the first and last resort for every 911 call, whether it involves criminal conduct or not. And that's mental health calls, that's homeless calls, that's that's a variety of things, including, you know, uh, uh, abandoned vehicles. There are so many calls where law enforcement does not need to get involved, where we can have a different kind of non-law enforcement response. If we can shift calls and, yes, shift resources to stand up a new unit of non-law enforcement response, I believe that will represent real systemic change in a way that has the potential to actually bring people together. All right, Mayor Daryl Steinberg, as always, thank you for spending some time with us. Uh, if you want to see what, what else is going on in Sacramento, you want to check out his blog, go to cityofsacramento.org.